Hey skincare nerds, welcome back! If you're new here, my name is Kathy, and on my channel, we have fun breaking down the world of skincare and beauty. Alright, so you struggle with acne, you love CeraVe, but you're not quite sure which of their acne products are right for you? Well, don't worry, because this week we're going to break down the entire CeraVe acne line. We'll talk about how the active ingredients help clear your breakouts, how they compare to other CeraVe products, and how to use them all to help you figure out if they're right for you. You'll want to stick around till the end, because we'll go through how to mix them and how to add them into your routine. Let's get into it. Okay, before we jump into the products, let's back up a little bit and talk about how acne progresses. Acne develops in stages, and figuring out which stage it's at will help you figure out which products are best for you. The first sign of acne is you start to produce excess sebum. So you start to produce more oil, and it actually changes the lipid composition in your sebaceous gland, or your oil gland, making it more likely to get clogged with dead skin cells and debris. If your pore gets blocked, it can form closed comedones or whiteheads. It can also open up, exposing the clogged contents to air and oxidizing, causing it to turn black, hence blackheads, or open comedones. These are non-inflammatory acne types, but if it then becomes colonized by P. acne bacteria, it can create inflammation and cause papules or pustules to form. These are the zits that can be both red or tender and can fill with pus. That's inflammatory acne. More severe forms are nodules and cysts. Take a look at this so you guys can see the difference. By the way, you can also have a mix of inflammatory and non-inflammatory acne. Some of the best non-prescription acne-fighting ingredients are in CeraVe's acne line of two cleansers, an exfoliating gel, and a retinol serum. The line is non-comedogenic and oil-free, which is a good thing if you're breakout prone. And like all CeraVe products, they're also fragrance-free. Why is there so much hype around CeraVe? Well, they have great multi-ingredient formulas, but they're still affordable. And I personally really like their base formulations. All CeraVe products have ceramides, cholesterol, fatty acids, aka vitamin F, as well as hyaluronic acid in them. These moisturizing ingredients are especially great if you have acne, since a lot of acne-fighting ingredients can be really drying. Alright, let's go over each product and talk about how to use them before we get into the more complicated questions like if you can combine them and how to add them into a routine. Let's start with the Acne Control Cleanser. So the active ingredient in the cleanser is 2% salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is one of the only non-prescription ingredients the FDA recognizes for treating acne. It's an ingredient we've talked about a lot on my channel, and it's great if you have milder, non-inflammatory breakouts like whiteheads and blackheads, hyperpigmentation, or skin texture concerns like keratosis pilaris. But it does have more limited effects on inflammatory acne. It works by exfoliating the top layer of dead skin cells to reveal newer skin underneath. Unlike other chemical exfoliators like AHAs, salicylic acid is oil soluble so it can go deep in your pores helping to clear them out. The downside to salicylic acid is it can sting or even irritate your skin if you over exfoliate and it can make your skin more sensitive to the sun's rays. The good news is a cleanser is a gentler way to add salicylic acid into your routine compared to a leave-on format. But back to the cleanser, it's got other great ingredients too. So there's another exfoliator in here, gluconolactone. It's a PHA that's very mild and it's a humectant as well, so it's also a hydrator. It's got other humectants like glycerin and hydrolyzed hyaluronic acid to draw moisture to your skin and ceramides to strengthen your skin barrier and to keep the moisture from evaporating away. This helps to buffer some of the potentially drying effects of salicylic acid. There's also niacinamide, a great all-around ingredient we've talked about a lot to improve skin texture, reducing discoloration, minimizing the look of pores, and strengthening your skin barrier function which can help reduce inflammation. I also want to point out that on the bottle, CeraVe highlights hectorite clay because of its oil absorption properties. But it's so low down the ingredient list, it's even past xanthan gum, a binding agent, so I feel like it's kind of gimmicky and they just added that for marketing. The salicylic acid in here is what's actually doing the heavy lifting for breaking up the oil. So this is a gel cleanser that is a bit creamier than the Renewing SA cleanser. It lathers well and it's still pretty gentle, but it isn't drying at all. I'd say it leaves your skin with a velvety matte finish. It comes in a similar bottle as the CeraVe SA cleanser and they're both foam 
foaming gel cleansers. The main difference is there's likely a higher amount of salicylic acid in the acne control cleanser at 2% versus the suspected 0.5% in the SA cleanser. I'd also say this is more balanced and a creamier gel, um, and it's good for oily to balanced skin types. Let's talk about how to apply it. First, don't forget to patch test. Just wet your face with lukewarm water, massage a half pump or a dime size on your face. I like to leave it on for a couple minutes while I brush my teeth before I rinse it off. Oh, avoid your eyes and mouth or any broken skin because it will definitely sting. I'd recommend you introduce this slowly, so two to three times a week at first and then work up to use this every morning and night if you need that. A bit of stinging in the beginning is common, but watch out for signs of irritation like redness and peeling. Okay, so next up, the Acne Foaming Cream Cleanser. This has 4% benzyl peroxide as the active ingredient. Benzyl peroxide has antimicrobial properties and it's been used to treat acne since the 1930s. It tends to be better for inflammatory acne. Benzyl peroxide provides oxygen to the pores, which can kill the bacteria associated with acne because they're anotolerant anaerobes. That means they don't like being exposed to oxygen. Benzyl peroxide is also an exfoliator, helping turn over the skin faster and get rid of dead, oily skin cells and exposing new, healthy layers. The downside is it can cause redness and dry out your skin. Also, since it's an oxidizing agent, it can bleach fabrics like your clothes and your sheets, which is why I recommend using it in a cleanser format. You wash it off so it's less likely to bleach your pillows and your sheets if you rinse well. By the way, about 1-2% to of people get a contact allergy to benzyl peroxide, so be sure to patch test first and make sure you're not one of them. You can find non-prescription benzyl peroxide of up to 10% in the US. While 4% isn't as strong as 10%, there's a lot less risk of experiencing the bad effects like drying and irritation, so it could be better in the long run. You won't get the benefit of it if you stop using it. This comes in a tube package, so it is different to the other CeraVe cleansers. It's also a cream cleanser, which is great, I think, because it can balance out the drying effects of benzyl peroxide. They've also added humectants like glycerin and sodium hyaluronate, as well as niacinamide and ceramides for skin barrier support and helping to reduce inflammation. There's also glycolic acid in here to help with some gentle exfoliation, but the texture of this isn't as creamy as CeraVe's hydrating cleanser. It's really hard to describe, but it's kind of like the texture of mucus, which I know really doesn't sound great. So I don't know, it's kind of like a watery cream. Even though it's got the word foaming in the name, I find it does lather, but it doesn't really foam up. But that doesn't mean it's not cleansing your face. This does wash your face, it just might not feel as satisfying. It leaves my face feeling clean and pretty matte, but not stripped. It's best for oily skin since benzyl peroxide is still drying, just don't skip the moisturizer. So how do you apply it? Well, make sure to patch test first, then splash your skin with lukewarm water, squeeze out a dime size amount, and gently massage it into the entire area of where you get acne. Make sure you avoid your eyes and rinse it off very well to avoid bleaching your clothes. Again, start slow, so two to three times a week, then slowly increase to once a day. If your skin can tolerate it and if you need it, you can increase it to twice a day. If you get dryness and peeling though, reduce how often you're using it or how much you're using. Add a sunscreen to your routine if you don't already have one because it also increases sun sensitivity. So which cleanser should you choose? Salicylic acid is usually used to treat milder cases of non-inflammatory acne. While inflammatory acne usually needs an antibiotic or an antimicrobial agent like benzoyl peroxide. So if you have a few breakouts, some whiteheads or blackheads with texture and post-acne hyperpigmentation, go with the acne control cleanser with salicylic acid. But if if it's inflammatory or your acne is more than a few breakouts, go with the cream cleanser with benzoyl peroxide. Both of these cleansers are sulfate free and have effective acne fighting ingredients that are balanced out with hydrators and skin barrier friendly ingredients, so they're both great options. All right, let's move on to the treatments, starting with the Acne Control Gel. This is an exfoliating gel that has 2% salicylic acid in it, which by the way is the same as in the Acne Control Cleanser. Unlike the cleanser, this will be a bit more intense since it's staying on the skin longer. The cleanser is great for applying it to a bigger area, like your whole face, but you can be a lot more targeted when you're applying with this because it's got this nozzle. This also has a supporting cast of other exfoliating acids, AHAs with hydrating properties like glycolic acid and lactic acid, so you're gonna get different levels of exfoliation. It also has niacinamide to help calm the skin and those three essential ceramides to help restore the skin's natural barrier 
as well as glycerin and sodium hyaluronate for some hydration. So this is a pretty lightweight gel and it spreads really easily. It absorbs pretty quickly, but it does leave a bit of a sticky feeling behind that does eventually dry down. Other than the stickiness, I actually really like this. This can help clear close homodones as a good spot treatment through gentle exfoliation and can help minimize the look of pore, sebaceous filaments, skin texture, and also post acne marks. So another product with the same percentage of BHA is the Paula's Choice BHA Liquid Exfoliant, but it's really hard to compare because they're so different. I would say if you didn't like the oily feeling of that one and you don't mind a sticky texture or you need something that's more targeted then this could be the way to go. So how do you use this? Well, a little bit goes a long way, so you only need to squeeze out a tiny bit. Apply a thin layer over wherever you're breaking out as your treatment step, so that's after your cleanser and or your toner. Also, patch test and start slow and low with two to three times a week. The label says you can apply up to three times daily, but I'm not sure about that. Be careful and slow down if you feel like you might be over exfoliating. This is best to use at night because the exfoliating acids might increase sun sensitivity and you're more likely to get sunburned. So wear sunscreen and a hat, but if you've been watching my channel, you're already doing that. Last but not least, let's talk about the CeraVe Resurfacing Retinol Serum. I've talked about the serum a lot before, so it's no secret I really like it because it's really gentle. The main active in here is retinol, which is a form of retinoid. Retinoids are one of the most widely researched ingredients in acne. They're very effective in preventing comedones from forming and can also help reduce post-acne marks as well as reduce the effects of sun damage. They can cause redness and peeling though, which is why it's great to start with a gentler retinol product like this serum. The downside though is it will take longer for the effects to kick in. CeraVe hasn't disclosed what percentage concentration of retinol is in the formula, but I've seen estimates online at 0.01% to 0.3% based on where it shows up in the ingredient list. The retinol in here is also an encapsulated retinol, which evens out the delivery to your skin instead of all at once. So again, this is a very, very gentle serum. There's also licorice root extract and niacinamide in here. We love the niacinamide. We've talked about that a lot already because it's in all of these products. And the licorice Rich root extract will help to brighten any post breakout pigmentation. There's also CeraVe's signature ceramides and hyaluronic acid, as well as propane deal, a humectant, so it won't be too drying. I like the airless pump packaging on this because that helps keep the product stabilized. The texture of this is also really nice. It's a lightweight gel cream. There's some dimethicone in the formula, but it doesn't feel silicone y. Just a nice watery gel. It absorbs well and it doesn't leave any film or stickiness. This is good for all skin types, but you'll definitely need a moisturizer afterwards if you have dry skin. It's a great starting retinol if you have sensitive skin or if you're using other strong actives like benzoyl peroxide in your routine. It can also help with hyperpigmentation if you're patient. To use, just apply an even layer at night once a day as your serum steps, so after cleanser and or toner. Even though this is gentle, patch test and start every three nights or every other night and slowly work your way up to nightly. All right, so now you know all about the products, let's talk about which one is best for you. If you have non-inflammatory acne and it's in a bigger area, I'd go for the CeraVe Acne Control Cleanser. But if it's non-inflammatory and you want a targeted treatment, go for the Acne Control Gel. If you have inflammatory acne, start with the Acne Foaming Cream Cleanser. For a great overall product that can also target post-acne marks as well as signs of premature aging, go with the Resurfacing Retinol Serum. It'll be great to help prevent new pimples from forming as well. For a combo approach, try the benzoyl peroxide and a retinoid. Initially, it was thought benzoyl Benzoyl peroxide cancelled out the effects of retinoids, but that has since been debunked. I'll link to the studies in the description below. There's also research showing it's more effective than a retinoid on its own. Plus, there's even a product out there combining a dapoline, a retinoid with benzoyl peroxide called Epiduo. So that means the cream cleanser and the retinol serum can be used in the same routine. But I would start with one in the beginning and slowly add the other. After a few weeks, you should start seeing your skin clear up. Use these until your skin is clear, then maintain your clear skin with retinol. But again, these two can be very sensitizing ingredients, so monitor your skin and go slow and low. What about mixing the other products, like benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid? Well, they work differently and are usually best when they're used on their own, not together. Layering them in one routine, like the cream cleanser with a control gel, can seriously increase irritation risk. As for salicylic acid and retinol, this combination could be a bit too much, so I wouldn't layer them, but you can use them on alternate nights. As for salicylic acid and salicylic acid, 
I'd avoid using the control cleanser and the control gel in one routine because you might end up over exfoliating. Just pick one. Lastly, don't forget your moisturizer and sunscreen. Remember, always go slow and low and be patient. It can take time for you to see results, up to four to six weeks. These products are for mild to moderate acne. If you have severe acne and you've tried everything and you're still not seeing results, you really should consider seeing a dermatologist for some stronger solutions like prescription antibiotics or retinoids. All right, so that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you found this video helpful and if it was, don't forget to give your girl a like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any more fun and informative skincare and beauty videos like this one. Love you guys. See you next time.